Dear students, today we shall be talking about the plankton. Wherein we shall be talking about the classification of the plankton. When we talk about the plankton, it is derived from the Greek word which means drifter or wanderer. The individual organisms constituting the plankton are called as the planktons. The organism is considered plankton if it is carried by the tides and currents and cannot swim well enough to move against these forces. Some plankton drift this way entire, for their entire life cycle. So, if we try to understand this, that the plankton are those organisms that have not been able to swim in the water and swim in the water and swim in the water and swim in the water. बल्कि ये वो ऑर्गेनिज्म होते हैं जो जिन्हें पानी का बहाव टाइड्स वेव्स करंट्स अपने साथ में जहां वो जाती हैं अपने साथ बहा ले जाती हैं अब कुछ प्लैंक्टॉन पूरी की पूरी जिंदगी प्लैंक्टॉन ही रहते हैं यानी कि वो हमेशा बहाव के साथ ही इधर से उधर जाते रहते हैं मगर कुछ प्लैंक्टॉन सिर्फ एक पार्ट लाइफ साइकिल का प्लैंक्टॉन रहते हैं जबकि उन वो एडल्ट स्टेज में जब उनमें काबिलियत आ जाती है स्विम करने की तो वो नेक्टॉन कहलाते हैं दिस इज दिस इज द पिक्चर विच डिपिक्ट्स द डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ द प्लैंक्टॉन्स फ्रॉम द रोटीफरा फ्रॉम द you can say crustacea from the copepoda so some of the planktons are only classified as plankton when they are young and they eventually grow large enough to swim against the water currents plankton are usually microscopic often less than 1 inch in length but they also include larger species such as crustaceans and jellyfishes so these crustaceans and jellyfishes when they move along the currents of the water wherein they they cannot move against the water current then even at that time they are termed as the plankton the scientists classify plankton in several ways in based on the size type and how long they spend uh, their time in drifting well Um, broadly speaking we can categorize the uh, planktons into two main types that is phytoplanktons that is the plant source that is zooplankton which belong to the animal group <clears throat> when we talk about the planktonic organisms which include the bacteria archaea algae protozoa and drifting or floating animals that inhabit for example the pelagic zone of the oceans Now what is the pelagic zone of the oceans it is the zone of the open water where there is no land there is no contact with that with the land that is called as a pelagic zone and the bodies of the fresh water essentially planktons are defined by their ecological niche rather than any phylogenetic or taxonomic classification is available but now planktonic organisms this very term plankton was first proposed by the by an oceanographer called as the victor victor hansen in 1887 to designate the heterogeneous assemblage of minute organisms and finally divided non living material which are known to occur in the waters and to float at will of the waves and the other water movements jab victor hansen ne 1887 mein ये टर्म प्रपोज की तो उसने ये एक हाइड्रोजीनस यानी कि एक मिक्सचर का नाम दिया वो मिक्सचर जो पानी के साथ में फ्लो कर रहा था उस दौरान इस मिक्सचर में प्लैंगटॉन्स के अलावा हर वो नॉन लिविंग ऑब्जेक्ट भी थी मान लीजिए कचरा वगैरह भी था जो इसके साथ में आ रहा था मगर लेटर ऑन सिर्फ प्लैंगटॉन्स को जो जिंदा प्लैंगटॉन्स हैं उनका नाम उन, जिंदा हैं उनका नाम प्लैंगटॉन्स दिया गया प्लैंगटॉन दिया गया क्लासिफिकेशन की हम बात करें तो वी क्लासिफाई दीज वेरी प्लैंगटॉन्स ब्रॉडली ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ क्वालिटी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ साइज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस दियर टाइम स्पेंड एज प्लैंगटॉन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शेल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द्लैंगटॉन्स विच बिलोंग टू द प्लांट सोर्स आर द एनिमल सोर्स वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द प्लांट सोर्स वी डू हैव द एलगी 
which are represent, represented in the plankton of the inland waters then we do have the fungi which occur as bacteria just like bacteria which are abundant, abundantly uh, like plankton uh, <clears throat> present in the water and the animal origin from the animal origin we do have the different kinds of organisms we have protozoa we have the coelenterates we do have the rotate uh, rotatoria which um, in which these very wheel animal cules belong then we do have the gastrotrichia we do have the bryozoa we do have the arthropoda which are from the animal <clears throat> we do have some occasional planktons as well that is they have they spend their part as the plankton but um, but they they do not act as the plankton all through the life but occasionally they act as the plankton such as we do have certain flowering plants such as wolfia that occur at the various depths and is recorded as the plankton organism especially in rivers when we talk about the fight platyhelminthes we do have the example of tubularia um, which which is very which has very less importance in the fresh waters but it is pre present in the marine water we do have the medusa as a cylindrate we do have the mayfly in names as the example of insecta we do have the water mites as the example of the arachnida we do have the juvenile stages of the fishes as the example of the vertebrata now when we when i am talking about the juvenile stages of the fishes i mean that the larval stages which do not have the ability to move against the strong currents of the water that is why they are called as the, uh, the plankton occasional plankton plankton or plankter <clears throat> now coming on to the classification and terminology that how we um, how we um, term different kinds of the planktons are what is the basis of the classification now first of all we shall be talking about the based classification based on quality now based on the quality they can be categorized as the phytoplankton if they are from the plant origin and zooplankton if they are the from the animal origin and many a times the phytoplanktons are categorized into phytoplankton proper that is those very uh, plants which bear chlorophyll there is saproplankton we call them the bacteria and fungi are categorized in this very group <coughs> on the basis of size this is very interesting one on the basis of size we do classify these very plankton into different you can say um, groups based on the size if a group which is having the size more than 20 cm they are called as megaplankton and the metazoans jellyfish dinophore salps pyrosomes tunicates cephalopods and amphipods come in this very group when the size of the plankton is 2 to 20 cm they are called as macroplanktons so metazoans certain metazoans then ketogonads then medusae dinophores salps doliolids and doliolids pyrosomes cephalopoda amphipoda they come under under this very group so the size more than 20 cm is megaplankton the size 2 to 20 cm it is macroplankton now we do have the example of the mesoplankton is 0.2 cm to 20 mm it means that is 0.2 mm to 2 cm it can also be called as 20 mm is also can also be called as 20 cm and under this very group certain meta metazoans copepod medusa cladocera ostracod coda ketogonath tyropods tunicates they come under this very category then we do have the example of the microplankton 20 to 200 micrometer having the size in between 20 to 200 micrometer so certain large protists and the most the, most of the phytoplanktons protozoans foraminarians ciliates uh, rotifera metazoans they come under this very group then we do have the example of the nanoplankton that is 2 micrometer to 20 micrometer in size small eukaryotic protists diatoms flagellates pyrophyta chrysophyta chlorophyta they come under this very category then we do have the picoplankton that is 0.2 micrometer to 2 micrometer that is small eukaryotic protist bacteria chrysophyta they come under this very group 
then we do have the femtoplankton which is regarded as the the smallest organisms on the basis of the size the most of the marine viruses they come under this very category we call them as the femtoplankton so megaplankton more than 20 cm macroplankton 2 to 20 cm mesoplankton <clears throat> 0.2 to 20 mm then microplankton 20 to 200 micrometer then nanoplankton 2 to 20 micrometer picoplankton 0.2 to 2 micrometer and then femtoplankton 0.2 to 0. less than 0. 0.2 uh, micrometer so these are the certain examples such as we are we 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 do see here the jellyfish tunicates some uh, you can say um, rotifers these are the copepods and these are the uh, these are certain other organisms uh, phytoplanktons then uh, we do have uh, we do have the examples in the form of the you can say wheel animal clues or rotifers so these are certain um, examples are the certain photographs of the uh, planktons <clears throat> so this is an example of the of the plankton depending upon the size the larger one megaplankton then macroplankton then mesoplankton then microplankton then nanoplankton then picoplankton and then femtoplankton so on the basis of the local environmental distribution in which en environment they are present we call them as the limnoplankton if they are present in lake if we call them rheoplankton if they are present in uh, running water we call them helioplankton if they are present in uh, pond we call them haliplankton if they are present in salt uh, water body we call them as high palmyroplankton if they are present in brackish water so brackish water the planktons of the brackish water they are called as high palmyroplankton the planktons of the salt water we call them as haliplankton the pond plankton we call them as helioplankton the running water plankton we call them rheoplankton or potamoplankton the lake plankton we call them as the limnoplankton so based on origin we uh, on the basis of the origin whether from where the uh, these planktons originate we classify them into autogenic plankton if those very organisms are produced within the, within the water body if those very organisms are produced within the water body we call them as the autogenic plankton but if they come from the outer side that the outer one with the help of the waves um, you can say air in the form of spores from the other outer runoff then they are called as allogenic if they are produced within the water body autogenic if they come from the outer side we call them as the allogenic so on the basis of content on the basis of content we categorize planktons into euplankton and pseudoplankton euplankton it means true plankton that is all the living organisms um, but plankton that is we call them as the true plankton but pseudoplankton for example if debris uh, is present along with the plankton we call those very plankton as the false plankton or we call them as the pseudoplankton then uh, on the basis of the life history planktonic life that is the uh, time spent as the plankton we call them as the holoplankton if they are permanently plankton that is if they are free floating that is they are at the mercy of the water current all through the life we call them as the holoplankton but if they are temporarily that is they act they are acting temporarily as the plankton we call them as the temporary plankton or meroplankton such as certain life history stages of the organisms they act as the plankton whereas in the adult stage they become the nekton or the free swimming organisms <coughs> then based on the habitat in the water body they can be categorized as hypoplankton if they are benthic in nature now most of the planktons it is obvious that maximum most of the planktons they are pelagic that is present on the upper surface of the <clears throat> water now why they are present on the upper surface of the water i will tell you that most of the planktons phytoplanktons they are present on the upper surface because they are dependent on the solar energy for making their own food they utilize the electromagnetic waves and they convert these electromagnetic waves into chemical energy so it is the phytoplanktons phytoplankton which are present on the surface of the water that is why most of the planktons or zooplanktons they are present on the surface 
so because the zooplanktons are dependent on the phytoplanktons then small fishes are present on these um, feed on the zooplankton and similarly this cycle goes on repeating but certain certain planktons they are present on the bottom of the water body <coughs> which can reach to the bottom by mixing of the water by currents of the water by turnover of the water but they are called then as the hypoplankton if they are present on the surface they are called epiplankton if they are present um, in the aphotic zone that is the zone where no light reaches then we call them as the bathy plankton so uh, a zone uh, in the water body where very less light is present that is called as dysphotic zone so those very planktons which are present in this very dysphotic zone are low light zone we call them as the mesoplankton so we do have on the basis of habitat we categorize them into hypoplankton if they are benthic we categorize them as epiplankton if they are um, they are uh, Uh, present on the surface if they are present in the darker uh, you can say part of the water body we call them as bathy plankton if they are present in the uh, in the low lighted zone we call them as the mesoplankton Uh, so next uh, our next video will be on the distribution of the plankton how planktons are distributed their vertical distribution their uh, you can say um, geographical distribution that we shall be dealing in our next lecture